Hey guys, welcome back. So, here in Indiana, it's March, but we've had some unseasonably warm weather, which has allowed me to get out and do some work a little earlier than I had planned. So, I have two food plots planned, one of which is going to be in this really thick brush area. It's a lot of buckthorn, and then another one is, it's also very thick, but it's got a lot of fallen timber. So, both areas need to be cleared, and then we can put some plots in. So I want to take you guys through the whole process of adding food plots in a wooded area, in a brushy area, not just show you an open area where you're just going to test the soil, till up the ground and put some seed in. I want to show you the other possibilities of where you can put plots in and the work that it takes. So it's going to be a multi-part series, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and stick with all the videos. Now the deer use this thick brush bucks like to move through this stuff they like the thick nasty areas but too much of a good thing isn't a good thing so in this area you can hardly move through it uh, the deer have trouble moving through it so we're going to clear out an area here and put more of a narrow linear style food plot not a big destination plot just something for them to move through on their way out to the ag fields so it'll be a good evening food source and a transition point to hunt over now the biggest thing when you're creating a plot that used to be woods or used to be heavy brush, you have to make sure that you're going to get enough sunlight. So it needs to be open on, on the south end. So as you can see, <coughs> this one, there's not a lot of tall timber on that south side. So it's getting a lot of sunlight, it'll help with the growth. This plot's going to be kind of kidney bean shaped, I want to have a little bit of curvature to it. Just so the one, when the deer come in from one end, they can't immediately see what's on the other end so they have to come through that plot to see if there's does in there especially in the fall you want those bucks to have to work through there and not just be able to see what's in there right away now i'm gonna leave the thick brush along the edges of this plot to screen it make it feel safe for the deer so that's going to help and force them to work into that plot to actually see what's in there because they're not really gonna be able to see from the outside too well so i run into this bush hog these are very pricey so before you consider going out and buying one or decide that you can't afford one so you can't use one, think about running one. I know there's a couple places within 15 minutes of me that run them. Okay, you could rent them for about 70 bucks for five hours or it's like 120 bucks for a whole day. So it's very affordable just to run it. Don't run out and buy something that you're gonna use maybe once a year. So I went out, rented this, we're going to clear out this area, get as much done with the bush hog as I can. I'll go back in with the chainsaw and the hatchet, clear out some of the bigger stuff. But you'll be surprised at how much this bush hog can really handle. So once I get all this brush knocked down, get some of these bigger trees hacked down, <clears throat> I'm just going to put a pile here in the middle and then we'll burn that out. Then after I burn that out, I'm going to come in here, till it up. Uh, get some soil samples, probably have to put down some lime, um, get the soil right. I'm planning to plant clover in the spring, hopefully get some turkey in here to use it, and then have some green for when the fawns start to drop. Later on in the summer, um, right before fall, probably around August, September, I'm planning on coming back in, tilling this plot up, um, and putting more of a fall mix in there to give a late season food source. Now as you can see in this second area there's a lot of fallen timber. It was all clogged up. So I'm dragging a lot of those trees out of there, bush hogging a lot of that thick stuff out of there. It's going to be a second linear food plot up at the front of the same property. So the plan is to direct that deer movement starting in that back plot and they're going to work up through and come up into that front plot. So it'll give you a few stand locations, even on a small property. So I want to take you guys through the whole process of adding food plots in a wooded area, in a brushy area. I want to show you the other possibilities of where you can put plots in and the work that it takes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and stick with all the videos. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. As always, make sure to contact us for the Habitat Solutions on your whitetail property. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, 
and comment on this video.